Hello, I'm trying to work with YouTube videos. Here's my first episode that I'm gonna make about traveling because you guys were asking me to do it in Instagram. Uh, you selected this topic. So um, some people asked me how to cope with the fears that are going along with moving from country to country and traveling by yourself alone. Uh, I think that here many things are coming to psychology and in general I see very positive impact of classical psychotherapy on many areas of life. That's why usually that's the thing that I rely on and I will be referring a lot to this kind of uh, practice, you know, I think it's necessary, it should be done by everybody, not every issue or feeling can be resolved by psychotherapy, classic cognitive behavioral psychotherapy is like the main approach that I value the most. Even though it's not the only one, I also studied myself for a hypnotherapist. Um, anyway, the CBT, classical cognitive behavioral therapy, not what you thought. If you are into specific practices, you might interpret it differently, but no, it's about psychology. It doesn't help to resolve every issue necessarily, especially traumas that happened in one's life before the person was three years old, because uh, before that age, we don't really have verbal thinking and uh, totally formed consciousness. So um, it's hard to reprogram that issues verbally because uh, we remember sensations, we remember feelings, but for sure we, we don't have memory in its classical understanding, such as remembering events, describing them, being able to make an impact on them verbally. That's why, so straight to the topic now. Uh, I was born in St. Petersburg uh, in Russia. I lived there all my life. I was uh, sure that I will never travel for some reason. Probably it was like a defense idea, you know, because I knew that my family didn't have enough money and I was imagining, okay, if I'm born here for a coincidence, probably I will just always be here. And this is kind of uh, the slave mentality that I had before when you are a slave to circumstance and you don't want to get responsibility for your life and your existence, your experiences, and uh, the way how everything goes in general. And this goes to many, many topics, not only traveling. Uh, once you understand that you are actually the master of everything, you can be deciding what's going on in your life, you can influence things, and you are much more powerful than you thought, everything starts to change a lot. Of course, it takes your effort, it takes consistency, time, discipline, and mainly the strong, strong belief that you are deserving of it, that you are able to overcome things like positive relationship with yourself. And this is exactly where therapy is meaningful, I think. Uh, so I was growing up there until I was uh, 25. 20, yeah, about 25 years old was my first travel ever by plane. I was going still to Russia, but it was for a tattoo convention in another city far away. Shortly after that, I went to Berlin. This was my second tattoo convention, my first European trip and first trip outside the country when I was 25, 26 and I already made my own money to make this travel, to make this trip because before I couldn't. Of course, first tra travels I was doing with my friends, with colleagues and by myself, yes, it could be terrifying, especially before I started working with psychologists. Uh, after a while, already doing therapy and uh, traveling more to Europe with friends still and sometimes by myself, I started uh, moving to Germany. I lived in Germany four years. I moved there uh, getting married to a person that was the owner of the tattoo studio where I was working. Uh, we got very close. We were intending a relationship. It was more to solve the issue that we are long distance and uh, for work purposes for everything at once. So we made a marriage. Um, I moved there. I lived there, worked in his studio. Um, after a while, I decided to move to Paris already by myself due to certain circumstance. And I was interested uh, in studying fashion because in Russia I graduated graphic design and Paris could offer me fashion design courses that were very cool as an additional uh, education after my main study in Russia. So Paris uh, took me as a student already without student visa. It was kind of kind of messy with organization, but at the end it worked. It was like one year course where I studied fashion business, fashion marketing and fashion styling and creating itself. So it was all in one, like advanced course after graphic design. For that, I was living one year in France. Uh, to me, this was quite 
entertaining, easy and very nice experience, except it was crazy expensive because um, I was already studying French in my school in Russia as a child from um, eight years old till I was 18. So basically 10 years of studying French very intensively. And the languages is one of other important topics that I wanted to discuss here because I know many of my followers, especially from Russia, they are, even if they are colleagues and have the same job and same um, freelancer lifestyle, they're struggling with moving just because of the idea of using another language. And uh, so I knew French. In Germany, I had to learn German and uh, I knew basic English. When I started traveling, I didn't know any English at all. I couldn't speak English, nothing. I'm still, as you see, I'm speaking not really, <laughs> not really amazing. So France was one year and after France, I came back to Germany for a short time and I received my American visa. So I moved to United States and now I'm located in New York where I'm working. Uh, here I've been for a year. So many questions probably people get when they hear my story. Uh, how I adapt so easily to the systems, how do I close my eyes on disadvantages of places, how do I get along with new mentality and so on. So all of these topics I would like to cover in today's video. Um, so the language issue. Um, it happened that way that I was born very curious about many things and I think it's an amazing quality and I think that all people are very curious originally and why they stopped being curious is because of some weird traumatic childhood experience. Uh, by the way, today I'm using microphone for the first time. I'm doing video basically almost first time by myself. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of cut, amazing transitions and the sound might be not perfect. I'm very happy to see your comments about it with suggestions that are very simple because I'm not going to Google it. I know my character. I'm not nerdy enough to go and Google and find out. Not very friendly with technology. I'm not easy with that. Um, yeah, so where was I? Uh, about languages. Yes, curiosity. I think that originally we all have a lot of curiosity to life because it's something initially that is in our being. And uh, how I became so connected with this feeling and not suppressed by social conditioning, by growing up, by insecurities, even though I had some insecurities obviously before and stuff like that. And I still have, but way less than before. Um, how it happened is uh, thanks to me living five years in the forest. I think you, most of you already heard this story because for the new people who found this video randomly, I will explain I'm a tattoo artist. Uh, I became most known in the world thanks to tattooing and my impact on it, uh, such as bringing my artistic Russian background into tattooing. And uh, I also posted on my page a lot of stories about uh, growing up in the woods. So how did it happen? My parents were doing some kind of camping. They liked getting away from the city, from our toxic family environment that was there, from criminal uncle that was living in our apartment. There was a lot of struggle. So we went to the forest um, with a tent. Uh, at first years, there was not even a road where we could drive. It was a train and then over one hour walk. My mom did this trip even being pregnant with me. Uh, it was a whole strange story. So we lived on the lake in the woods uh, near Finland, a lake that is very cold all summer. Then there was a way up hill, very high up hill where was a camp few tents. Sometimes it was me and my mom, sometimes much more people like friends, relatives and so on. Uh, up to 50 people, let's say, and sometimes only me and my mother because she didn't really work. So she had time to stay the whole summer with me there. Uh, so June, July, August, sometimes September, we stayed there. Yes, it was extremely cold. We didn't have electricity. We didn't have shower. As you can see, like it developed that way that I'm not too demanding to my environment. Yes, I like beautiful buildings. I like beautiful environment, beautiful cities. I like civilization because I'm grown up in the very big cities and Pittsburgh has as many people as Manhattan has or even more. Um, but forest made me very connected with myself because every year from zero years old until 23 or 24, I was spending the whole summer there. So all in all, it made five years. And thanks to this experience, I understood, okay, like environment is not really important. What is important to me is not the comfort of having like my hair dryer that I'm used to have or my iron to deal with my clothes, which I never do, to be honest, or having shower, having all kinds of essential things. 
is not that important as long as I'm healthy, as I have a beauty around me. As an artist, you can imagine I was appreciating it. I was happy in my forest and having people around and having ability to hear my inner voice and ignore social conditioning. Because when we were coming back to the city, I felt a lot of pressure of staying in one apartment, staring at the walls and um, being very limited, like in the nature. Uh, the brain processes constantly information, the wind, the sun movement, the things are constantly in motion, which is by nature, I believe we are programmed to track it. And so my brain was busy in the forest, I couldn't really get down, depressed or whatever, even if I felt sad there sometimes or lonely. I couldn't really go into my head because my attention was constantly outside, how to make fire, how to warm up my food, how to make dishes when I need to go far away to the lake and it's cold there, how to wash my hair when it's cold, uh, how the stars are looking, um, how the trees are moving, is it too windy, maybe the pine will fall on our tent, I'm gonna die this night, you know, it was, <laughs> it sounds absurd, but it was my reality for many, many years and uh, I think it helped me being very connected to myself, being very curious, being more brave and more fearless, maybe, from what I hear from my friends as a comparison. Uh, so I think just as every skill, we can develop this kind of sense and uh, we can work on ourselves. Doesn't mean that when I go to airport, I don't feel some fear about taking a flight or I don't feel some resistance of traveling alone, of uh, initiating conversations with people I don't know, whose mentality I don't know, whose language I speak not so ideal. I do it regardless of my fears, plus I developed enough of positive beliefs about myself, such as um, I know that I managed to study well in school, I know that I understand information fast, I'm very curious, attentive, um, I get along with many people, my profession also shaped this quality in me even more. And uh, even though I had years in school when I was very introverted, very reserved and didn't really talk to people, I was painting most of the time by myself at home or playing with my, I don't know, one, two friends and my mom and mostly not seeing people in general. Um, regardless of these years, other years I was very intro extraversive. I was talking to random people in transport and uh, even my first job I found like that. I was driving from subway uh, to my home and I met a woman who was um, holding her baby, speaking French with her, checking her homework in Russia. And I noticed a lot of mistakes and I told her, oh, by the way, I can actually help with that uh, because I hear that her homework is not going smooth for you. So this is how I found my first job and I was working as a tutor for years. And I noticed that the more you take actions and initiate stuff, the more people actually will give you opportunities that you want and the more life will feel satisfying and complete. Let me just check. Yes, thanks God the recording is going. <laughs> I really don't want to struggle for now with cutting the video, so that was fine, I just made a check. Um, then what comes to traveling to other countries without moving into them, it's the same, you just need to understand uh, that you have enough qualities why people could be caring about you, why they could help you, why they could value you, and that actually the world is not an enemy, it's more a friend. Yes, there is a lot of uh, difficult and terrible things going on, but it's a part of the reality, it's just good to learn to accept it as it is, such as in my forest, I had to accept, you know, bad days, bad weather and uh, rain killing the, my attempts of doing fire to get my food and uh, stuff like that. Like, it's just acceptance. And uh, once you learn to not kind of ignore, but think less of negative outcomes and positively thinking about, positively think about yourself, about your experiences, about other people, that they will actually be there for you, they will be as much as they can. Of course, if they cannot help you as well, you don't have to take it personal, it's more on them. Maybe they are stressed, maybe they're in their own world. They don't mean it against you because as long as you are now having internet, watching this video, probably you're adequate and you can deal with daily routines. Even if you have uh, like too high level of anxiety as many of my friends do and they share with me about it, uh, it's always under your own control. Once you decide to get rid of it, uh, or, I mean, not get rid because it's kind of protesting, but okay, accept it and lower your anxiety. It's actually up to you. You can hire a therapist, you can try different sources of it. You can try self-education on YouTube. There's plenty of videos 
about uh, anxiety, its roots, causes, and how to lower it. Yes, some issues, they are, as I said, they are occurring under the certain age that you are not able to change it drastically or completely. But it doesn't change the fact that your effort will make a huge difference. Uh, so travel regardless of your fears, that's best I can tell you. Uh, then about learning languages. For many people it's difficult. I believe why it is difficult is mostly because a lot of teachers, they try to teach adults just the same approach as they teach kids, which is wrong because before I was uh, tutoring kids and adults about language, French in particular. Um, I didn't practice it for too many years, I'm not perfect in it, but it was enough to teach school kids or beginners, adults, uh, because I can actually speak French freely, not exactly 100% correct, but I know enough rules, I know enough of uh, theory that is required for teaching the basics. So I developed my own approach to teaching and I actually wanted to study for a synchronous translator Instead of graphic design, that was my choice. At the end, I chose creativity because I can express myself fully. And in translating, yes, it's still connected to psychology that I like a lot. It is a creative job as well, but not as much. You're still in, inside of a system, limited system that humans invented, you know. You're not really this full power creative figure. But anyway, I have strong opinions about learning languages as well. So in my opinion, uh, you need to always First, be quite good with your own language, understand rules and system of it. Um, probably you don't want to learn, uh, let's say, Russian, ideally, or some other language, your native language, ideally, in terms of rules, in order to learn foreign language. Uh, but believe me, it will make a huge difference. Once you understand that languages have a clear, clear structure, you will be actually able to, to learn any language practically. So especially with Latin languages, when it comes to that, um, I always start to learn how to read. It's very easy, there are reading rules, why certain words are pronounced that way. Uh, then there are basic grammatic rules, such as uh, verbs, conjugation of verbs, and so on, so on, so on. So I believe if you find a good teacher, that's the point, that you will be able to learn languages very fast. You will just have to get used to it, you will have to be better with your own language in terms of understanding the theory. After that, it's easy. If you want to know more details, you can contact me and we can discuss some kind of micro-consultation where I can help you with that. Because often what happens, I teach my own teachers how to teach me languages, because uh, their system is extremely slow, it takes years, it makes me forget many things. It is confusing in terms of motivation for me because uh, when we do steps that are not so rational, not having a lot of logic, and I'm a very logical person, uh, I just don't memorize stuff. And I know that m the system that I developed works amazing for people who are motivated at the first place. So when you want, you can really make a difference about anything in your life, literally anything, almost in any conditions. Almost. 99% of cases, you can change whatever you don't like about yourself as soon as you stop seeing yourself as this ego construct that you build up during your whole life, that society told you and uh, reflected on you like you are this, you are that, you are a boy, you are a girl, you have to do this, you have to do that. As soon as you start seeing yourself as a being, as a part of the environment, part of this nature and something, whatever you believe in, um, not so isolated and not so much concentrated on your ego, you will understand that actually you are free to change everything and every quality about yourself and you can form yourself the way you want. And this is, I believe, a secret of my success in all the areas that I'm advanced in. Um, and this includes my ability to travel and change countries and even continents all by myself. I'm not saying it was extremely easy. I'm not saying that I didn't cry sometimes, that I didn't feel exhausted or too lonely or there was no problems, of course. Everywhere I had to figure how health insurance works, how mobile internet works, how everything works, basically how to buy food, how prices are formed, everything. But <laughs> once you live in the forest, you understand that social norms, how it is working in certain country, is not something to be afraid of, it's just a system that you enter. Like I go out of the forest, I enter my Russian system where I grew up, my environment, I enter these rituals that people have, why you can dress this way but not that way, why you should wear this to this event and not wear that to another event and so on. And when I go to a new country, I just need to learn again, like a language, I just need to see the global system, why it works like that, how I can 
adapt to it and uh, instead of focusing on uh, bad qualities of mentality, on bad traits of this and that, I focus on why I moved there. I'm thinking, okay, I wanted in Germany to make higher profit for tattooing, I wanted to spend time with my husband, I wanted to spend time with my colleagues, friends and uh, get European clients at, like having the access to my work easily. This is why I moved there. So regardless of Germany being not so pretty for me visually, um, people being a little cold and hard to connect, I was still quite happy there because it was my choice. Plus, I knew that I can always travel inside of Europe to change my visual role. So for example, I was leaving every two weeks because I figured, yes, for me it's very important to have beauty around me and Germany is really not my favorite place in terms of this preference. So I was working there, living my life, and every two weeks I was escaping to other countries, France, Spain, Italy, somewhere else, for a few days to just get recharged visually. So this is breaking down to feeling my own needs, feeling what makes me happy and motivated, following what I like and what I want to do, staying productive and not being distracted by daily compulsions such as, I don't know, immediate pleasures, scrolling social media instead of spending time how is helpful for me or profitable for my future and so on. Um, it's a very simple thing. I th I'm sure you heard it from many public figures or many motivators already. Uh, then when I moved to Paris, there was totally no clients. I didn't have job almost because realistic tattooing is not in high request there. And all my other abilities such as online teaching or whatever I could do to make money like selling paintings or um, teaching languages online, doing whatever. I didn't really have time to do that because of my study in the university that was five days a week, like a full program, full time university thing. Um, I only had weekends that I was normally planning to tattoo, but I couldn't. Um, plus I had to do homework. So all in all, I've spent a lot of money in this year. Was I upset? No, I was understanding that I prepared myself to that. I had savings. Uh, I had a goal, I wanted to learn fashion design. Did I apply it at the end in real life? Not yet, I don't really use it. Do I feel like I wasted a year of my time? Completely no, not at all. I learned that I really like Paris. I learned that I like the culture there. I learned that I like uh, visual aesthetic there extremely. So it made me always happy just the fact of going into the street. And I feel like moving into each new country, I expand myself because all the circumstances, they make me learn something new about myself. And so this way my awareness map about my own personality gets wider. Um, I become more rich internally because I adopted already traits of German culture, traits of Russian culture, French culture, Italian culture, because I've spent extremely a lot of time there by traveling, just visiting the country. And now American culture as well. Uh, American mentality to me has very interesting sides in terms of marketing, in terms of abundance thinking, which sounds primitive, but it is actually making sense. Um, there are things that I like in every country and this is why I think traveling is such a good plus. Let's wait. Hi. Um, yeah, so moving from continent to continent is no different to traveling. And I think a big part of it, why it could be comfortable to fly alone or to, in general, stay alone, you know, move alone and overcome struggles alone uh, is a fact of being comfortable with your own company, which takes your time and effort to learn and find out what it is you value for yourself, what are your core values, what are your needs, what rituals and behaviors and actions can make you feel more grounded, more happy, more calm, like self-regulating skills and uh, stuff like that. Uh, what else did I forget to say about all this topic? I think that was the main part that I wanted to mention. And uh, if you have struggles with uh, anxiety, with uh, fear of flying, fear of uh, connecting with new people, with unfamiliar things, try making it regardless of your fear because your brain will be taught through actions and will actually adapt with time, uh, trust me. Or if you need some support, I'm offering sexology consultations, which they sound like it's only about sex, but at the end, um, our life is all about this energy that we use in intimacy and we use it also in our daily life. So actually what I'm offering is very close to psychological consulting and um, when I feel like somewhere I don't have enough competence to discuss the problem, I will always refer you to a better specialist that is exactly about your type of issue, but I'm always welcoming you to reach out 
and I'm really happy to make more consultations on that topic. I got very good feedback. Yeah, so if you don't know where to start, just keep in mind I have this option such as uh, online consultation that is one hour, one and a half, something like that. And let me know how is the new format, how do you enjoy my videos, and if it was helpful or entertaining. Bye.